So one other great feature of this uh, audio precision unit is it has the burst generator in. So instead of doing a sine wave, I can go down here and choose a lot of options, including square waves. So if I just click the square, I am now doing a one kilohertz square wave, again, five millivolt peak square wave to the input of this phono preamp and looking at the output there. So one kilohertz looks very, very nice. Very, very clean square wave response. Let me, let me up the frequency now. So let's go to, let's see what it looks like at 10K. Now I'm at 10 kilohertz. Very nice, just a little bit of rounding. And mainly that's due to the capacitance of the second stage. It's a um, common cathode amp. So the Miller capacitance is gonna be relatively high, probably in the 200, 300 picofarad range. So the source resistance of the preceding stage is gonna basically set the high frequency pull in this amp which is more than fine. The bandwidth of this amp is flat really to 100 kilohertz, and I'll use that input capacitance to actually tune the RIAA stage. So let's go see what it looks like at 20K. A little bit more rounding. And here we can go up to 100K. Apparently not. The oh, that's right. The square wave generator has a maximum one that I'm not sure exactly what it is, but let's try. Can we do 40k? Nope. 30. No. Maybe around 20k is the maximum for that. The other thing I'll do is I'll go into a burst mode, which is always pretty cool. So we go to burst normal. And here, I can basically set up the frequency as well as the burst characteristics. So I can choose the low level and how many cycles at this low level, which is 10% of my 1.633 volts, and how many burst cycles I want, which will be the full 1.633 volts. So on my scope, you can see what that looks like. And this is great for peak power testing where Instead of sneaking up on maximum output power with a sine wave, which will deplete any, you know, any uh, charge in the capacitance of the power supply, you can, you know, hit the input really hard and actually see if you'll clip with a larger signal than you might normally see with a sine wave test.